Greetings to those who watch below. Before we start today's stories, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Ghost City Shelton, Lefty Kim, Steffi Ray, Wicked Witch, Jess Black Curtain, Aztec Priest, and Lisa Watts for being those who dwell below, an exclusive channel membership that will get you shoutouts at the start of every video. If you'd like to join them, check out the link in the description box below. For today's stories, we're going to an ancient land full of mystery, intrigue, and paranormal entities. That's right, it's time for some true terrifying Irish paranormal encounters. Haunted Castle Leslie by Bella Mort I'm 26 years old now, and this incident happened on the night of my 20th birthday in Castle Leslie, Glaslow, County Monaghan, Ireland. At the time this happened, Castle Leslie was a small hotel, featuring, I believe, eight bedrooms. Each room had a theme and was decorated accordingly. Our room for the night was the nursery, which was located on the third floor, and had a bay window that overlooked the small lake. The room and view were beautiful, and our bathroom was actually a large dollhouse. What made Castle Leslie different from most other hotels or B&Bs is that the guest was entitled to have free reign throughout the castle and grounds. One only saw or spoke to the staff when they were called upon. There were telephones located around the castle for this purpose. As I said before, it was the night of my 20th birthday. My mum and I had a fabulous dinner, and she retired early to our room. I was still so excited about being there that I couldn't sleep and wanted to explore the castle. I had bought a nice Cuban cigar earlier at dinner and wanted to smoke it in the drawing room, which was the only room in the castle where one was allowed to smoke. Well, the staff, who had their own living quarters in a separate part of the house, had gone around and turned off all the lights, leaving the castle pitch black. I had to stumble around the confusing layout by memory, turning on lights as I went down from the third floor to the first. I stopped halfway on the stairs to call the staff and asked them to turn off the motion alarm so that I could go smoke. I was told that they had not set the alarm and to go on. I slowly made my way through the hallway into the huge dining room, turning on lights as I went. Downstairs the staff had closed the huge floor-to-ceiling shutters from the inside and the doors separating the rooms were all closed. It was pitch black as I entered into the drawing room. This room was as long as the dining room and furnished with, amongst other things, a black grand piano, several couches with tables for reading, and various museum pieces, like photographs and antiques. As I said, I opened the door and felt along the wall until I found the light switches. I turned on one set, illuminating the room enough to see clearly. I crossed the room and sat in a pleasant chair, with my back to the side wall. From this vantage I could see the fireplace in front of me and slightly to my right. I lit up my cigar and casually glanced at the fireplace and saw a light flickering in the glass, like a reflection. I got up from my chair and looked around to where I thought the light was coming from and found, to my complete amazement, a white candle in a brass holder with a handle flickering on top of the piano. When I got to the candle, I noticed that it had just been lit. There were no wax drippings. Also, besides it being pitch black when I entered the room, the staff would have been positively fired had they left an unattended candle burning amongst all the old woodwork and curtains. I blew the candle out and sat back down in the chair to finish my cigar. The experience wasn't frightening. Rather, it made me feel comforted and smile. Castle Leslie is noted as being a haunted location in Ireland. One of the young men who had lived there was Shane Leslie. He died at war and can still be seen standing on the shore of the lake. I don't know if it was Shane that lit the candle for me, but I feel that it was lit because it was so dark and the ghost wanted me to find my way. Holiday Haunting in Donegal by Kurgeek 
My dad is from Donegal, a rural county in the Republic of Ireland, and my family have gone every summer since I was born. Normally, it's a fun, family-filled affair. All of my aunties and uncles and many cousins join us, and we spend a fortnight or so on the beach, and enjoy the Mary from Donglow Festival. Last year, my younger sister and cousin decided to head over for the festival without our parents. We decided to stay in the house where my granny and my father grew up, an old house hidden from the road and not far from the town. I had never stayed over in the house before, but had heard a lot of stories from my older sister and my aunties about the house having spirits in it. I wasn't too worried. If there was anything, they would be related to me and wouldn't harm me. On the day we arrived, we were getting ready to go out for our first of many nights of the festival. I felt very uneasy in the house, and couldn't quite put my finger on why. I had been there before many times, when my great auntie and uncle had stayed here, before moving to a more modern home on the hill. But now, it felt different. As I got dressed and put on my makeup, I felt very watched. I can't describe it in any other way than saying I felt as though someone was right at my shoulder, breathing down my neck. I continuously felt like I could see something out the corner of my eye, but when I turned, there was nothing there. We came home from our night out at about 2am, and had decided for the holiday to all stay in the same room. My sister and cousin in the double bed, and me on a mattress beside the chest of drawers. That night was one of the strangest nights of my life. I kept waking up, shivering with cold, then would fall asleep, only to wake later, sweating and overheated. One of the times I woke up, I looked up at the bed, and saw that my cousin and sister were both wide awake. In the morning we laughed it off, but throughout the holiday the same thing would happen. We would move around the house, feeling watched. We would wake up at the exact same time every night. And on one occasion, I went to the kitchen to find all the chairs pulled out from the table. I don't know why, but I managed not to be too afraid. I told myself it was an old house. That's why the fire didn't help the cold. The footsteps were just the creaking walls, and the feeling of being watched. It must have been me being overtired from the bad night's sleep. However, when the festival was over, things took a turn for the worse, and I could no longer convince myself that there was nothing going on. One night I awoke wide awake at 3am, like so many nights before. But this time, I heard the sound of whistling. It can't be a tin whistle, I told myself. It's just my sister or cousin breathing. But then, it began to move more melodically. A tune. I tried to close my eyes, and pretend it wasn't happening, until I fell asleep. In the morning, my cousin told me that she had woken up in the night, and heard tin whistles. I asked her not to tell my sister. The next night I was woken up again by a noise. It sounded like a saw, or wood against wood, like a, a friction noise. I turned my head to the chest of drawers close to me, and saw the copper handle swinging. Something had been opening and shutting the drawer to wake me up. I was petrified, and tried to sleep. Finally, there came a night when I lay my head down on the mattress and felt it move, jolting, as if someone had pushed my mattress with me on it, across the way towards the chest of drawers. I sat up and saw how much space there was between me and the chest of drawers, a good few inches. I lay back down and told myself it wasn't happening. A few minutes later, I felt the push again. I sat up and instantly lay back down. My mattress was pushed right up against the chest of drawers. It felt as though whatever was in the house was isolating me and trying hard to get me to talk about it to my family, but I didn't want to scare them. It was all too much for me, and I booked the ferry back home, four days earlier than I was meant to return. I felt terrible leaving my sister and cousin, but I couldn't stand it any more. On the last night I spent there, I woke up, 3am again in the morning, and felt as though there was someone outside my room. 
I could hear incredibly quiet whispers, almost like a vibration from outside the bedroom door, as if two people were discussing something. At this point I was angry. They had ruined my holiday. So inside my head, I said, if you're going to say something, just say it. Stop whispering. There was silence, and then, very audibly, I heard the word, girls. I lay there, absolutely terrified, and just a few moments later, my cousin woke up. I didn't tell her what happened. I went home that morning, but weeks later, at a big family dinner, I was speaking to my cousin, and she revealed that, like me, she had experienced a lot of things that she didn't tell me because she didn't want to upset me. We told each other what we had been keeping to ourselves, and our experiences were very similar. My aunties chipped in too, and told us frightening stories about the house and the spirits. My cousin and I discovered we had both woken up to the sound of bicycle bells from outside in the lane. She also said that she felt as though there was a woman in the house called Nance, but she wasn't related to us. My other cousin then admitted that one night she slept over and saw a woman in her room, standing at the mantelpiece, facing away. My aunties told us that Nance was our great-grandmother's friend who would often visit the house, riding down the lane on her bicycle. It all sounds unbelievable, and to be honest, I wouldn't have believed it, had it not happened to me. Needless to say, I shall not be staying in the old house this year, or ever again, for that matter. Old Spectre in Ballycastle Bay by Nyla Caldwell I live in a small seaside town called Ballycastle in Northern Ireland. We moved house from Belfast to here six years ago. The reason my mum decided to move to Ballycastle was because of its incredible history and striking scenic views full of cliffs and waves which crack on the rocky shores and spray white mist for miles inland. These typical reasons for moving to a seaside town are far more densely compacted with the paranormal than I would have believed. My mother recorded this story in her diary, which she has kept since childhood, and has recorded every paranormal experience she has ever had since she could write within its pages. I believe it is accurate. In September of 1989, my mother, father, and two brothers who were young children journeyed for a casual holiday of three days to the town of Waterfoot in North Antrim. They often made this journey, and their regular custom was to take a day to spend in the nearby town of Ballycastle. It was a regular enjoyable holiday, with nothing out of the ordinary seeming to happen, until my mother decided to walk along the dunes of the beach, along to the harbour, on her own, while my father entertained my brothers in the sea. The harbour that existed then is not the same as the one which exists today, so I do not know how to describe it to you. It says in the diary, she stood on the outermost edge of the second pier. When she was standing on the pier, she described seeing a man sitting on a big drum with a bigger light on it, which flashed every few seconds over the harbour. This man was holding a fishing rod and casting it over the edge with his back leaning on the back of the big light. The only thing that made him appear in any way remarkable was the fact he was wearing very strange attire. She wrote that he wore a weird limp shirt with a dirty old jacket with ripped shorts and a dirty goatee-like beard. While she was observing the peculiar figure, the temperature dropped and she was aware of a sea mist which summoned itself out of nothing since it was a clear, unusually sunny and warm afternoon. She casually approached the man and said hello. The man promptly turned his head to face her with what my mother described as a funny expression. She wrote he had nice blue eyes, but they were odd, and they would make you blink. My mother now knew he was a spirit, and he slowly faded into nothing while the two of them stared eye to eye, not breaking contact until he had vanished, the mist and the chill rolling on with him. After this experience, my mother always returned to Ballycastle, since she thought that the spirit looked happy to be there when he was dead, so I think we would be happy there when we are alive. I don't know who this spirit could be, 
since the pier is gone and now is open sea. Sisters in Europe by Lunar Eclipse I am a 25-year-old Australian who travelled around Europe last year with my younger sister, who for this story I will just call Kay. Kay and I had been travelling for three months by ourselves and with friends for some parts. Kay and I are both interested in the supernatural, so on our adventures we went on a few ghost tours here and there. We explored the underground Edinburgh vaults, the Parisian catacombs, and old supposedly haunted castles. While all these activities were super fun and educational, we never had one creepy or unexplained experience. The creepy and unexplained didn't come until the last few days of our trip, when we weren't looking for or expecting it. The first experience took place in early morning Dublin, before sunrise. At this stage of the trip, Kay and I were travelling with just the two of us, and we were running quite low on money. We had a day trip booked to take us out to see some castles and other sites of Ireland. We had been instructed via email to meet up with our tour group at Dublin train station at 6.30am. Low on money and not wanting to pay for a taxi, Kay and I decided to get up extra early and walk to the train station. According to the concierge at our hotel, it would take us roughly 30 minutes to walk there, so we set off at 545 just to be safe. Being the eldest sibling, I felt responsible for Kay's safety, so I was always very aware of our surroundings. As we were walking in the dark to the train station, the streets were still very quiet at this time of the morning. We saw a few people here and there, but not enough to feel comfortable about two girls walking alone. Anyway, to the weird part. Kay and I had been walking for around 20 minutes, when I noticed the shadow of a person approaching us on the sidewalk. I looked behind me to see if we were dealing with somebody friendly or not, but nobody was there. Besides a couple walking on the opposite side of the street, and in the opposite direction to us, when I turned forward, the third shadow was still there. This time, Kay turned around to look behind us, and when turning back she asked me, Did you just look behind us because of the shadow? To which I responded, You see it too? We weren't freaked out yet. I suggested that it may have just been an optical illusion, like perhaps one of us was creating two shadows due to the angle of the sidewalk or something. So, we tried to prove the theory by putting our arms straight up in the air and waving them around while watching the three shadows. When we did this, only two of the shadows copied our movements. The third simply kept walking alongside of ours casually. Kay and I both began to laugh nervously. We spent the rest of the walk looking behind us, trying to catch something or someone following us, but we never saw anybody, and the shadow walked with us the entire way to the train station until it was too lit up to see any of the three shadows anymore. Personally, I'd like to think that perhaps it was a guardian of some sort. Kay and I really should have got a taxi. It wasn't smart for the two of us to be walking around in the dark in a place we barely knew. So maybe the shadow was just trying to make sure that we arrived at our destination safely. A Family Curse by Dawn Seeker 94 I live in Northern Ireland, just outside Carrickfergus, in a renovated mill that's been in our family since my great-grandfather's time. It's safe to say that I've had an easy life. He was very wealthy, and this was passed on and added to, as well as the house, which was changed from the mill thanks to my grandfather. Lots of unexplained things have happened in that place, and from my great-grandfather's journals that he kept, I think it's due to him. After he went away to England, he came back to the mill, and things started occurring, and I quote from his journal, Things like faces in the darkness, and noises in the night. He unfortunately towards the end of his life developed dementia, and his last entry read simply, I'm so sorry. My grandfather inherited the place, and things continued for him. He would often tell me of things he saw and heard when I was a kid, and they used to scare the hell out of me. But as I got older, I figured that they were just stories to scare me, because he had kind of a wicked humour. 
he's now in a care home, and as my mother never wanted the house, I decided I would take it, as it's worth a lot. I have a wife and a daughter, and it's a part of my family's heritage. I'm rather sentimental like that. As soon as we spent the night, weird things started occurring. They started off small, a few bangs, things going missing. I put it down to being an old house and my own carelessness. But then, the real hauntings began. Plates were smashed, doors and cupboards opened by themselves. One night as I was walking to the study, I saw a shadow against the wall. Thinking it was mine, I thought nothing of it, until I realised there was no light behind me, and at that moment, it moved across the wall and out of sight. That truly started to frighten me. Then, as I came home one day, I heard the sound of quick footsteps, a giggle, and the study door slammed shut. We hear voices whisper in our ears when on the computer or watching TV, saying things like, I'm here, and not yet. Worst is, this is affecting my family. My daughter made two new imaginary friends, who tell her to go into the knife drawer and tell her to draw strange things. Usually it's simple things like the moon, but one day she drew a pair of red eyes in darkness, so after that I took away her books and colouring pencils. My wife hears noises, voices, sees things out of our window, and is becoming very distraught. These things happen regularly, maybe once every two nights, and at its worst, every night. Many of you may listen to this and just dismiss it, but for me, this is a real thing. I live through this, and I'm at my wit's end. I don't want to sell the house, but it's getting close to that point. Can anyone please help me? Is there anything I can do to stop this curse? Hi guys, thank you so much for listening to today's stories. I really hope you enjoyed them. If you did, make sure to leave a like, and also, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, making sure to hit the notification bell so that you'll know when the next video goes live. So, until next time, sleep tight.